want to welcome you to this first episode of, well, we're not sure quite what to call it yet, maybe The Connection, and uh, it's a feature of Furnace Brook Wesleyan Church where our mission is to make more and better disciples for Jesus. The idea behind this is because we're separated right now for social distancing, that we wanted to get to know each other, and this seemed like a good uh, platform to do that. And so you'll see in this episode some examples of videos that we're looking for um, created by our family. And we would like to see videos from you. If you have a recipe you would like to share, if you would like to talk about your pet, we would like to meet the pets of Furnace Brook. Or livestock. Or livestock. If you have um, an activity or an exercise regimen that you want to share with us, if you're a biker or a hiker, we would love to see videos and have you talk about that. Um, if you are being creative this uh, year, um, this summer, whether it's an art project or um, making a bubble recipe, um, anything like that, we would love to see what you're doing and we would also like to see you. I just wanted to share with you a couple of quick announcements. That's one of the benefits of doing this as well, is keeping you up to date on things happening at the church. Uh, this Sunday, we're gonna be having some gathered worship here under a tent in our backyard, back of the house here. And there are still some spots available, but you'll need to register for those, and you can do that by going to the website. And next week, we're gonna be hosting a blood drive at St. Alphonsus in Pittsburgh. And there's, I think, still opportunity to sign up for a spot the need is great, by the way, or to volunteer to help us with that. And then on the 18th, which is a Saturday, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the Pittsford Recreation Area, we're going to be getting together for some live worship and to celebrate some baptisms. We are asking that people bring masks, but you don't need to sign up for this event. Uh, our understanding is that we can have up to 150 people for an outdoor event like this, but we are asking that people wear masks when they can't maintain social distancing, and that everybody be careful. But it's gonna be a wonderful opportunity for us to be together and to worship and celebrate what God's doing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Philippians 1, 8 through 11. Philippians 1, 8 through 11. Philippians 1, 8 through 11. God can testify how I long for all of you with, with the, the affection, affection of Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the, to glory, the, glory, to the glory and, and praise, praise of God. Of God. Philippians chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. Good morning, everyone. I thought it'd be a good idea to share with you something that I've been doing since quarantine, and that is baking. I've been doing a lot of baking, and snickerdoodles are one of the hardest things for me to bake because I almost always burn them. So I've been making a lot of them to try to get them right. So I thought I'd share my recipe with you. These are gluten-free snickerdoodles, but you could probably use the recipe with gluten flour too. Visit our website at furnacebrook.org to get the recipe. So I combined the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients separately, and then mix them together. And then I take the dough and let it chill in the fridge for half an hour to an hour. And then after that, I take the dough out and I roll it up into balls and then in the cinnamon sugar mixture and then I freeze the dough I put those little balls of dough in the freezer for like 10 minutes and then I roll them in the mixture again and then pop them in the oven for 10 minutes don't do more than 10 minutes they might burn Everybody, I'm Lucy and this is my bunny Olive. Um, some cool tricks she can do is she can lay down and chew through wires. Am I done? <laughs> and if you guys have any cool pets or animals, we'd love to see videos of you introducing them to our church family.
This summer, our town library is sponsoring a um, town-wide event where you could pick up a pallet from the library, donated by Omia, and um, we were asked to paint different designs on them, and they're all over town. And I decided to paint one, and I wanted my theme to be whimsical. And um, so I decided to paint a tree with a door. I have a lot of families that walk by the house and with little kids and I thought it would be really fun for them to see and look at and use their imaginations and they can decide who lives in this tree. I used acrylic paint and then I sprayed it with um, a polyurethane um, clear spray um, to protect it from the rain and the sun. Super fun. My name is Grace and something I've been doing a lot of lately is hiking because it's a great way to get out of the house without really putting yourself or other people at too much risk. Um, my favorite hike I think that I've been on so far is Camel's Hump because while it's a really long hike, not always easy, the top is amazing because you have a 360 view of all of the mountains around you. and. Another thing that's great about hiking is some of the best hikes have actually been from recommendations. I haven't found them online. People have just told me about them. So we would love to hear some of your best recommendations for hikes. Back when uh, we lived in the old parsonage in North Chittenden, I had a fantastic garden and I took it really seriously. And even back then though, I really kind of gravitated toward the unusual plants because our church has a lot of really good gardeners and I couldn't compete with them when it came to conventional gardening, but at least I could have some things that they didn't have at all. Since we moved to Proctor, uh, our homestead has shrunk quite a bit uh, to the dimensions of village life, I guess. But I still have a few plants here that are unusual. We love the aronias for the brilliant foliage in the fall, but I like the fruit. I use it, uh, I freeze it in the fall, and then we'll use it in place of cranberry in recipes. This is Mexican sour gherkin. Mexican sour gherkin is just a, I don't know, it's a quirky little vine that has pickle tasting fruit that looks a little bit like tiny miniature watermelons. And then this is Chinese magnolia vine. And I've, yeah, I guess you can use the leaves to make a tea. And uh, if everything is going right, there should be some fruit, but I haven't even trained this to grow upward. And uh, honestly, I just like it because it sounds so exotic. So that's a little bit of what is going on in my garden. Thanks. All right, Furnace Brick, thank you for uh, sharing this experience with us. Goodbye. Bye.